Just want to welcome everybody for coming. Um, Math Pathways and What to Expect at IMS. We're excited about um, explaining some old pathways and some new pathways for students to experience while they're at the middle school. And so we're really lucky to have Aaron with us, who is the Associate Principal at IMS, to kind of kick us off today and let us know what's going on over there. Yeah, so thank you, uh, Lisa. Thank you, Aaron Miller. I'm one of the principals here at IMS. And uh, just want to kind of share with you what, what we're going to be bringing new to this year uh, or next year into IMS in terms of math uh, progression. And for some of you, you're going to be, it's going to be new to you. And some of you are going to have other kids that have come through our system that's going to be a little bit different. But really what we want to do is go through this slideshow. And I'm not going to read everything on here. And, and many different people are going to uh, contribute tonight. But really, we want to try to provide every kid at IMS an appropriate math place, an appropriate level of stretch, something that's not too easy, something that's not too hard, but to get them in the right spot so they successfully can learn the material, not only in the present, but it sets them up for future success in math, both at IMS and uh, at Mercer Island High School or wherever their secondary or um, their high school path takes them, but really trying to teach them that content standards and also the standards of mathematical practices is really what we're focusing on. So setting them up for success, we're gonna get kids from four different elementaries, plus kids from different places. So experiences are gonna be different across the board, but really trying to provide success for every kid is, is our goal, our primary goal in terms of math. So Lisa, why don't you go ahead and move to the next slide, please. So some things that we um, are really focused on, as I said, number one, ensuring appropriate placement for math and, and providing kids an opportunity to experience success and appropriate stretch right away. We want to get away from the concept of kids skipping content. Our teachers, our experts find that somewhere down the road, if kids are skipping math content, there's a high likelihood that a challenge will arise. Sometimes those challenges can be backfilled and remediated, but sometimes those that content is really challenging uh, to, to recover. So we wanna to try to eliminate the concept of skipping content. We also wanna provide multiple options for kids. That's both on ramps into maybe an accelerated track, but also off ramps if an accelerated track is determined that that's not something that is best for the student or they need to have um, some more remediation and or acceleration, we wanna provide opportunities for kids. And then one thing, I've been here a long time at IMS, and one thing that we have found is a real desire from the community to have as many kids that are ready take Algebra One here at IMS. A lot of times when kids come to middle school and families come to middle school, there's a thought about if my kid doesn't take Algebra in eighth grade, then some pathways at high school or post-secondary education might be limited to them. So really giving all kids that are ready the chance to take algebra at IMS is something that we're excited about. And we think these pathways we're gonna be sharing with you tonight are allow more of that to happen. And Aaron, um, just on those two, I know we have uh, Erica Hill, who is one of our associate principals at the high school with us tonight. Uh, Erica, do some students or can students retake algebra one um, if they took it in eighth grade, but don't feel confident, can they retake it in ninth grade and just continue on that pathway? Absolutely, yes. So that would be a, a great another pathway if students wanted to retake it freshman year. Great. I know that's a question that sometimes comes up. Um, you know, COVID-19 uh, certainly has had uh, its impacts. And what we've really been trying to focus on across the schools is minimizing that impact um, by both uh, anticipating students' uh, needs uh, academically, socially, and emotionally, but also make sure that we continue moving forward. We know that um, trying to fill every gap or anticipate every gap because of COVID um, really could have um, the effect, the negative effect of students not um, continuing on and, and reaching their full, full potential. Um, but one of the things that we certainly noticed uh, with our uh, mathematics, e even more than ELA, and this was borne out in our uh, fall SBA results, um, is that, you know, that the, mathematic, the mathematics trajectory that we may have typically seen pre-pandemic um, 
were impacted such that students did need to either slow down or, or not accelerate as quickly. Um, but with that, we don't want to limit students' um, ability to participate in Algebra 1, as Mr. Miller described. And so we really started working hard, thinking about what are some of those um, other ways that we can support our learners um, and knowing that it may not be in their fifth grade year um, and it may not be in their sixth grade year, but somewhere between where they are now in fifth grade and eighth grade, how can we make sure that we still provide those accelerated options that we've provided in the past? And with that, um, I would say we've intentionally created, and you'll see this tonight, um, a really uh, solid plan, which is going to uh, reduce the skipping that we've seen in the past um, that has created the gaps, but also make sure that many students have opportunities. So access is important. And as we set out on this, and we were really looking at um, trying to solve, uh, solve these problems, um, we really had two main goals. And that is we wanted all students to demonstrate um, you know, proficient mathematical skills uh, along the way, and so that they were that we could appropriately place them, but that they were also uh, experiencing success in math. And then also thinking about um, that continuous progression of our courses and that all students are getting access to rigorous and challenging instruction. For some students, that's the grade level math that their trajectory that they're on, taking one grade level all the way through middle school and on into high school, and others that means acceleration. And so if those were our goals, then we wanted to think about, well, what are the flexible ways that we can achieve that? Um, and so we were really thinking about um, how can we still um, provide opportunities for, for students to demonstrate readiness to accelerate, but then also thinking about what are some other ways that if a student did accelerate, could they get off of that pathway? And in the past, that's been challenging for students, which may not be a problem in middle school, but as they're getting up into pre-calculus and calculus, sometimes they're discovering other passions other than math. But if they've accelerated already, um, then where's that off-ramp? So we wanted to make sure that there were off-ramps, but then we also wanted to make sure that they're on ramps so that if a student didn't accelerate in fifth grade, but then they discovered math was a passion later in middle school, they'd still have that opportunity. And so those were important um, uh, flexible ways we want to achieve our goals. And they're both rooted in two of our four core values. Um, one is providing rigorous and challenging learning for our students. And the other is ensuring that, that there's equitable access and that we're including students in these progressions. So we're gonna be throwing lots of information at you in the next couple slides. But for those of you that are veteran IMS families, maybe you had a student or, or two come through already, really the, there's only two major changes that are happening at IMS in terms of math. And one of the changes is, is that we're changing our course titles. So typically we have course titles like Math 6 or Pre-Algebra 8 or Accelerated Math 6. What we're doing is we're removing the, the grade levels off of that because it allows for more flexibility of our kids. So a seventh grader could be in eighth grade math or a seventh grader could be in sixth grade math depending on their needs. And so we've reduced the, uh, eliminated the, the grade level on the courses. So that's one big change that might be different. So instead of accelerated, instead of math six right now, we're gonna have math one and so on. In addition, what you're gonna see, and this is the big change that, that we're proposing and that we've shared with our school board is starting uh, not next year, but the year after. So when our fifth, current fifth graders are seventh graders, we're gonna have this compacted math course. And we'll talk about that more, but really it's providing kids an opportunity to really focus on some essential standards of two grade levels in one year in order to get to that algebra. So. Those are the two main things that I'm going to have. We're going to detail these, especially number two, as we go forward. But I want to be really clear that what we're going to present to you, actually starting in the next slide, is something that is going to resonate for about 90% of our kids. We'll be talking about that for the most part of this meeting is how, what are the progression for 90% of our kids? We realize that there's going to be five to 10% of our kids that either need more remediation and or need more acceleration. So as we talk to this slide right here that Chris is gonna be talking about, I believe in a second, 
is this is dealing 90% of our kids. We'll talk a little bit later about the kids that need extra acceleration because we realize that's a need. And we'll, so we'll talk about that. So Chris, I think you're, you're up for the next slide. I'm up for this one. Um, hey, Chris, one before you get started, I just want to let people know, I do see the questions coming in and I, and I'm going to feather them in when we get to kind of the appropriate time, but I just want to let our attendees know, um, I do see them and we'll be um, addressing those. So I think that the, the important thing about this slide is um, what we were trying to show is how many different pathways are being offered at this point. So that if you've got a child who, who starts in high cap and wants to accelerate again, that's an option. If you've got a child who's in fifth and goes straight into course one, they can take course two and three, or they can choose to take course two and then course three and eight. And that I think is, um, well, as an ex fifth grade teacher, that's like thrilling to me because um, those kids who I was desperately trying to get into an accelerated pathway because they really wanted to do it are no longer in that real super high pressure position. Um, they get to just automatically go into course two and three if that's what they choose to do in seventh grade. So for me, that was, um, this was really exciting. And, yeah, and we'll have a more, a, a, another slide later that lists more of the pathways, but Chris is what she's talking about is just kind of a, a sample of some of the pathways there. So we'll come back to that slide in a minute, but that course two, three, and the allow, that's that new addition that I talked about kind of right in the middle of your screen, that's going to be the new one. And just a reminder, and to be clear that that course won't be starting next year. It'll be starting the following year. So when your students are seventh graders, um, that course will be available to them. And there's a question, actually, can you go back, Lisa? Sorry. There's a question in the chat and it really gets at this. And that is um, their child isn't in high cap, but has been exposed to some of the sixth grade standards and has been um, doing some uh, other additional work in the school. Um, but they're not necessarily ahead and not necessarily sure if they're ready for acceleration now. And so what does it look like next year for that sixth grader? And so Aaron, um, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but the student could um, just go straight into course one next year as a sixth grader. And then in seventh grade, take that compacted course two, three for their acceleration or they could take a proficiency exam because maybe the student is ready. So that proficiency exam in June, the student could take, which then they might test straight into course two. Those are kind of a couple of the options for next year. Is that correct, Aaron? Totally, and I, and I saw that quote too, or that chat message too. And even, even with this, there are gonna be kids that are right on that cusp, right in between. And so in that case, I would recommend that that student take the proficiency exam. Let's see where they're at. And then let's see what the, the kind of the best placement might be. But there are going to be kids that, boy, they're not quite ready for course two, but course one might not provide the rigor there or as much rigor as needed. So there, this isn't an absolute. It's not perfect but it does provide different pathways for different kids. And it provides no matter what choice is made next year for that student, it does provide the opportunity for them still to get to algebra. And in our past model, in order to get to algebra, kids had to skip a math content. Now we are making it so kids can get to algebra. Any kid in our school that's ready can get to algebra without skipping any math content. Uh, I think Lauren, are you, you're more from, most familiar with the books. Yes. So I am Lauren Dolby. I'm a sixth and seventh grade math teacher at IMS. Um, so this is um, kind of a similar thing from the last slide, but it's using the books. So on option one, that would be students take course one in sixth grade, course two in seventh grade, course three in eighth grade. And course two or option two is what would be um, the new pathway that we are going to be offering so that in sixth grade next year, they'd take course one. And then in seventh grade, they would take that um, combined seventh, eighth grade course two, three um, in seventh grade and then algebra in eighth grade. And so one of the reasons why we specifically are compacting in seventh 
grade and not a different year is partly because our curriculum um, ha already has a textbook created for that. So it's already designed for teachers to use. And the seventh and eighth grade content really is, um, it melds well together to go into one year. And there's so much in sixth grade um, that is super foundational that when I taught accelerated in the past and students had skipped that sixth grade math and went into seventh grade math, they were shaky on some of those foundational skills. So we really want to make sure that kids are ready to, um, particularly for that acceleration that would come in this option two for course two. And then the option three um, would be to take the proficiency exam and then start course two in sixth grade, course three in eighth grade, and then algebra in eighth grade. Fred, can I uh, add to Lauren's and, and maybe address one of the questions in the chat? So kids that choose that option two, we are hoping that's the, the com most common progression for our students. So in sixth grade, if a, if a student successfully does, does well in the course one, and what we mean successful in general terms, meaning they get a three or a four that shows understanding and or mastery of the standard, then they would automatically be enrolled in that course, that second course right in the middle, that compacted course. So another assessment wouldn't be made. We would feel comfortable or having to be completed. We would feel comfortable if a kid shows mastery and understanding of sixth grade to move them right into seventh grade. So it would not be another assessment. We're hoping most of our kids are there, but some kids might need a, another, a full year of seventh grade math. Therefore, they would go up to that option one. So no new assessment on there. And Aaron, I just also wanted to add, um, looking at students in sixth grade at IMS, you have very much a similar experience amongst the entire sixth graders versus four separate buildings and three teachers at each building having students, you know, show up at IMS, maybe with a very different experiences. So it's such a unique opportunity to really assess students in a like environment and know that everybody will be ready for that combined class. Yeah, thank you. Can I add, add on to that? Yep. One of the things that I'm excited about this is that when students um, enter in middle school, there's already so many things that they're adjusting to as they're going to different teachers and all of that, that this allows students to who in the past had to skip a level of math and adjust to the changes of sixth grade, that it really allows them to focus on, okay, I'm getting used to the middle school. Okay, I'm learning the sixth grade math, being really ready to go into that seventh grade. So it kind of... Um, can separate those two things. And to answer one of the questions, so IMS adopted this curriculum last year was our first year. So this is our second year of implementation. Um, I can't speak to the high school though about the adoption. Erica uh, Hill and I have been working with the high school um, closely. Um, we've been looking at algebra, geometry and algebra two um, texts. And that's actually led us to really contemplate the sequencing of algebra, geometry, and algebra two. So there is a team at the high school who's working right now, um, really rethinking, not rethinking, but just contemplating um, the pathways of once students are into those high school courses, um, what's the best way um, to work through. Um, in some ways that maybe they're integrated where you put algebra and geometry together um, other schools of thought is to keep them separate. So once we've made some determinations on that and sought some community input, then we will be adopting new curriculum um, and instructional materials in the coming uh, two to five years. Um, Lisa, I think, um, although it's on the slideshow, slides nine, 10, 11, I'd like you to just move to slide 12. I think um, people can review that. It's just a different way to look at the same information that we have before. So if you can move down to slide 12, um, Aaron, while you're doing that, I, yep. I just want to reiterate that that if a child is going into the combined seventh and eighth grade, there is no proficiency exam for them. They're not required like they would take if they were going from fifth into skipping into seventh. And I, I mean, I think that that's uh, worth saying one more time if we can make that real clear. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chris. And, and this slide just sort of reiterates exactly what I had said before is the fact that we're hoping course one, course two, which is the compacted course and algebra is our common 
progression for our students. We feel like a, a large amount of our students are gonna be able to do that. Since this is a common progression, there will be no, um, no proficiency exams to go through these. This is what we would just expect kids to go through as our natural progression of math. So, but just a reminder for those of you that might be interested in, boy, can my kid be in the, the compacted course next year? The answer is no to that because that course isn't gonna start till the 23, 24 school year. We need to get make sure our, our teachers are trained on the materials. We need to purchase the materials. We need to make sure that we, um, we have everything solidified before we, we roll out that course. Um, next slide, Lisa, I think kind of talking, it's you kind of talking about what a compacted course might look like. Yeah, we're just going to, we're going to skip through those other ones, which just basically show the same information in multiple ways. But um, I just wanted to say that this is a really, really exciting course to be offered. I had um, three sons go through um, IMS having all been in some sort of acceleration. And I will say that having to skip a full grade of math is difficult. So once we found that EdGEMS had this compacted course ready to roll, I'm very excited. So it is a compacted course where they're taking all of seventh grade and eighth grade and they're combining it into one full school year. Um, sixth and seventh grade math, seventh oftentimes solidifies the learning that was done in sixth grade. So it's easy to kind of compact seventh grade and then focus on the eighth grade in one school year. And the students that do enroll in that course two, three will have strong foundational skills and should have a high interest in the subject and a commitment to actively engage. It is going to be a rigorous class. There's a lot of math units and it will move quickly, but the students who are interested in math and are ready to learn will be successful. One of the things, Lisa, I, I think you, you kind of already spoke to this, but I would add to that is what the compacted course does is it really focuses on the essential standards, the have to knows, um, because there is uh, a lot of content in seventh and eighth grade. It really focuses on that, um, those essential skills and essential standards that kids need to know. So it's, it's a streamlined class basically of seventh and eighth grade, but because they get exposed to both grade levels, they're not skipping any of the content. So we feel like kids will be ready for algebra after completing that book. Uh, and what's Lisa, also exciting about this um, course is that it's equitable. So students who maybe did not take extra classes over the summer or didn't have access to tutors, you just need to show up at IMS, enjoy math, be successful in sixth grade, and you automatically get to go into this compacted course without the pressure of an assessment or worrying about tutors or any of those things so that you'd be ready to be in that course. Um, we will provide all of those, that instruction in the middle school. So at the end, of, as I just said a, a slide ago um, or a couple seconds ago, after kids have done that compacted class and it's still a prog great progression for them, they're, they're demonstrating mastery of the content, then they will go right into algebra. So it's going to lead to a significantly, we hope, we haven't done it yet, but our hope is and our thought is it's going to lead to a significantly higher number of students completing, being ready to complete algebra in eighth grade, which um, that puts them on a track to get to calculus as a, as a senior, if that's their path they choose. Um, and so we're really excited about that. A lot of places do it, um, as algebra as the eighth grade course. Uh, a lot of them involve skipping a content which as I said uh, earlier, that's not some, that's something we're trying to get away from to get more of, a, of a, a linear progression rather than missing a stair step as kids go up, um, up the ladder. S same thing here, you know, we're, a, a lot of stuff we're repeating just to be clear. Um, but also I think this is kind of talking also about um, what happens if my sixth grader wants to do something that they want to, they want to take a proficiency exam and they, they feel like their progression needs to be accelerated? Um, we do have proficiency exams 
for each grade level. So we have one that, that a student can show mastery of sixth grade content, one that a student can show mastery of seventh grade content, and one that a student can show mastery of eighth grade content. Those are proficiency exams that are developed by the experts here at IMS. The ones that have seen the content, have taught the content for many years, ones that understand the levels of learning and how uh, students need to, what skills students, students need to have mastered in order to be successful in the next content. So uh, we really feel like those are tools. We just spent a uh, significant time, Lauren and a team, spent significant time on the sixth grade one, making sure based on our new curriculum that it works. And we're really confident in all of our proficiency uh, assessments right now, exams, uh, to, to make sure that they get us the right data for the kids. And we'll be talking in a second, actually, on the next slide, um, if you want to move. Here are some resources. Oh, oh sorry. One, one too far. Uh, here are some resources that, uh, that people might want to look at in terms of, is my kid ready for uh, a, a higher level of acceleration or progression. So there's many different links here, Lisa. I don't know if you wanted to talk. I think you culled a lot of the links together. Yeah, I did. I just basically took the Common Core state standards. If you click on any of these grade levels, they'll tell you the standard and then OSPI will send you to another practice problems if you need to, but those are the essential standards and what will be on these um, proficiency exams, it will be standards-based. So wondering what might be on that sixth grade uh, proficiency exam by reviewing all of those standards of sixth grade. And then there's Khan Academy. There's lots of online resources that you could find that will take you all the way through those sixth grade um, standards. And so that's what will be on those proficiency exams. It's really important that we know that students have mastered those standards before we want them to skip ahead. So we're going to make sure that they have those skills under their belts. Um, we are also focused on um, standards for mathematical practices, which is the way students think about math and can explain their math thinking, problem solve. And so we're not going to skip over those practices as well. It's not just about the algorithms and whether they can solve problems. It's also the way they think about math and how they can present their math thoughts. Um, we have EdGems if you want more information about our adopted curriculum. Um, there's some key shifts in mathematics. All of this mostly is on the Common Core State Standards website. There's some interesting information about um, numbers and quality in algebra. There's a TED Talk about learning um, math and why it's important that we master each skill. And then there's the nomination forms. Um, parents will need to nominate their students so that they can take um, an, uh, a proficiency exam. So you can find that form here. It's linked in this uh, slide deck as well as on our website. And then there is the website linked as well, which will show you some of our math pathways. Lisa, um, two things. One is um, just wanna reiterate, I just wanna make sure that, we're, that we reiterate that a student who plans to take course one or sixth grade math, there is no uh, math placement tests that they need to take. All they, they will just enroll right into sixth grade math. Um, so the nomination form is only for those who want to accelerate and take um, seventh grade math or course two as a sixth grader. Um, the second thing is, is this presentation, um, is are we going to be making this presentation available via the website and whatnot for parents? Or do you want me to publish it to the, do you want me to get a um, a web address on it right now and put it into the uh, chat for parents so that they can access the links. How would you like to do that? Sure. It's also in, it was linked in the letter that was sent home Great. to families. We can put it on the website if you'd like, all of the above. Great. And, and going to the next slide, Fred, I think this, this illuminates what you were talking about. And this is kind of, this is our full chart. Uh, that, that includes grade level progression. There might be some students who, to, to be for full disclosure, that, that even with this chart need additional remediation uh, and or additional acceleration from even this chart. But as Fred, as you said, in that math five row, students that go from math five, which is a good amount of uh, current fifth graders, 
are going to go right, right horizontally over to math one along that blue line. And that's a standard math progression. No proficiency exam needed. People are just going to move uh, over. You'll see these green arrows um, that are kind of going down. Those are the ones that, are, that will need a proficiency exam. So a student who's in currently in fifth grade math, fifth grade math standards that want to try to move to math two, seventh grade math standards will need to show proficiency on sixth grade math standards because that's the standards that we that they would be skipping if they were to do that diagonal uh, math five to math two diagonal progression. Similarly, if a student is in high cap math, which right now is math one, sixth grade math, they will automatically be enrolled in math two next year. So they will move over horizontally from math one, high cap math one to math two. For those families that feel like they want their student to try to go from sixth grade math, math one, to eighth grade math, math three, they will need to demonstrate proficiency on seventh grade math standards in order for us to feel comfortable with them moving into math three. So any of the blue, any of the blue arrows, no proficiency exam needed. The only proficiency exam needed would be on these green arrows that are going diagonally down because that would be a situation where a student would be skipping math. Now, going back to our one of the first slides, we are trying to develop a system where students aren't skipping math. And if they are, they are showing definite uh, mastery of the skills that they would be skipping. So this kind of illuminates better what you were talking about, Fred, about when a proficiency exam is needed and when it won't. We're hoping or we're thinking that most people are going to be along the blue arrows, but there are situations that the blue arrows are not appropriate for kids. And so those green arrows might be more important. Just like I will say, we could have probably added another uh, row on this chart. There might be a small percentage of our kids in high cap right now that are ready for algebra. That is not something we typically do at IMS. We typically don't have sixth graders in algebra. We don't, that's not something that our students are typically ready for. If that is the case, most likely we would have them do the math three, per, the, the math two proficiency exam, the seventh grade standards. If they did really well on that, then we would invite them to come back and take another assessment of the eighth grade standards, because that's a really significant jump to go from math one or high cap elementary math to algebra. I would say that happens maybe with one student per year. Um, it's very rare, but it is a possibility. So this is not, this is a, this will cover probably 99% of our kids, but there is a, we understand that kids have different needs and we are open to having those conversations with families. And Lauren's uh, answered another question um, that came in, which is, and I think it speaks to, again, we can't come up, but we can't take into account every variable, but there is a possibility too that a fifth, uh, a math five student um, could take the uh, seventh grade math proficiency exam and go to math three. So there could be another arrow in there. It's not on there, but they would need to take that proficiency exam. Again, it doesn't happen often, but it's not a barrier that a student can't, right, can't right. do simply because they're not in high cap. So when we, when we talk about proficiency exams, the first step is to take the, the first proficiency exam of one that you, of class you may skip. You might think about skipping. If indeed, and this does happen, if indeed a student comes in and, and scores a, in the high 90s on a proficiency exam on a certain, proficiency exam on a certain grade level, we might, we will most likely come back to the family and say, boy, let's try another one. Let's just make sure the next step up isn't best for your student. But it's signing up for that first proficiency exam. And then we would communicate with families about maybe we should deep, dig a little bit deeper to see if another one is needed. Uh, Lisa, I believe this one is kind of our last slide. I think you're going to take that one. And I also want to invite, um, 
I know there's some people on here. Heidi, I see you on here. If you have anything from the elementary perspective, um, maybe even right now before Lisa gets into our final slide, anything from an elementary perspective you'd like to share? Um, no, I, I, I think you've covered it, covered it all. I, I did want to um, ask a, a question. So if, if a student goes in, is in math two in sixth grade, and let's just say they struggle, it's, it's overwhelming, you know, maybe they tested in or something. Can they go into the math two, three course in seventh grade and kind of get an extra little double dose of math two and then kind of stay on track? Yeah, so I, I think Lisa is illuminating kind of with her cursor that, and I'm doing it on my screen, it's yeah. not fixing it. So is there kind mm -hmm. of a yellow arrow from the math two Correct. Uh, diagonally to the math two, three, most definitely. And the yeah. nice thing about this is there's pathways on and off that don't mm -hmm. involve kids having to repeat a course. I think right. if a kid, if a student is struggling in a certain area, right now, our only intervention for them is to say, really, well, our only course intervention is to say, okay, let's repeat the course. Well, that's not a great model if a kid is, is successful in two thirds of the content or half the content. So yeah, there are more arrows and we can add those, Heidi, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, there are more arrows, uh, yellow arrows up, so we can add that. So thank you for that. And also um, just to reiterate, I know on that, that other more um, caricature type of, um, of drawing that you saw earlier with these math pathways, you know, as Aaron said, that's for 90% of our students, and that's why geometry doesn't appear. But you can see here that in eighth, in eighth grade, geometry for some of our students is um, still an option. Uh, and so I think there were some questions in the community about whether or not um, geometry would still be available to eighth graders. And as you can see, that is a pathway that a student um, could uh, reach in eighth grade. So we're not getting rid of that. Um, but it just didn't appear in that one graphic. Yeah, and I would say, you know, I've been here, I can't, I don't even, I lose track of time, 15, 16 years, and we've always had a geometry class because that meets the needs of a significant number of our kids. Typically, 16 to 25 of our kids every year are in geometry. I don't see that need uh, going away. In fact, there might be an opportunity as we as we roll this out with the compacted course and things like that, that more kids are prepared for that. But I definitely feel that geometry is still a, a viable option and a needed option for a lot of our students here. So we'll be continuing to offer that um, uh, as needed. And, and in fact, we've had one class of geometry for the last several years as these students get up into uh, seventh, eighth grade, we might have to have two. Just and we'll we'll determine that based on student needs. So, Lisa, why don't you go to that last slide and you can kind of send us home. Sure. And Aaron, did you want to speak to the fact that algebra you cannot take a proficiency exam for an algebra for the algebra class? Yeah. Yeah. Just that? to be clear, algebra is a state course. It's a required course, and so uh, we we don't allow skipping of algebra. So that is kind of a stop point, a class that every kid needs to take. And uh, I'm not an expert on the high school math progression, but obviously kids need to be very skilled at algebra in order to be successful in algebra two. And so um, that is not a, not a class that you can skip. Um, you have to show that from an accredited place such as IMS, um, you have to show algebra on a transcript. So thank you, Lisa, for that. So this is just a quick kind of reminders around the proficiency exam, since this seems to be where we get the most amount of questions, that uh, they will not be given to every fifth grade student. I know in years past, we gave a proficiency exam to the whole fifth grade to see who would qualify. Um, this year, we are not going to be doing that. You as a parent must nominate your own child to take a proficiency exam. Uh, nomination forms are available on the website. And if you do well on one, you may be asked to do one at a higher level and to determine the most appropriate placement. Parents can nominate their child anytime before May 27th. Once the form is uh, submitted, you'll receive an email with confirmations about dates and times for the exams. And then the results will also be community email in the summer. High cap students will not need to take a proficiency exam to enroll in course two. 
Course two for high cap students is the natural next progression. So if you are in high cap and you are taking course one and you're ready for course two next year, you're good to go. No proficiency exam necessary. Uh, nomination form only indicates your interest in having your child take a proficiency exam. This is not a self-selection that they will automatically be placed. It is to say that you would like to take the exam to demonstrate mastery of the content that you would wish to skip. Also, if you have any question about your student's readiness, speak with your child's current math teacher. So I know that your current teacher has lots of information about your student, and they will let you know if they think they're ready to take a proficiency exam. Even the high cap students have spoken with their teachers. If they were ready to double accelerate, you can let um, anyone at IMS know that you're hoping that you'll get more than one if you needed to double accelerate. And they, there may be some students that are ready for that. Yeah. Lauren, I, there's a question in the chat. I know, like, as I mentioned earlier, you and a, a team of our um, teachers worked on the sixth grade proficiency exam. There's, I don't know if you saw the question in the chat. Do you have any comments about that? And then I can talk about the upper ones. I know that there are two parts to it. There is, I believe, a multiple choice part and then an open ended question. And we were very cognizant of length. So I can't remember how long it was, but I want to say it's definitely not more than 40 questions. I want to say it's more towards 30, but I'd say in the 30, 40 range um, total between those two. Um, Aaron, do you know how much time they get per? Yeah, typically, you know, so it's trying to weigh the, the content knowledge, but also the math fluency. And, and so typically all the tests are about 40 questions and, and a typical uh, length of time is about 90 minutes. The goal is not for it to be stressful. We are very clear with families that there, especially if it's content that kids haven't officially been taught because they are going to be skipping or trying to skip a content, is there going to be some questions that they know really well and some questions they don't because they haven't necessarily been taught the material. And so we try not to make it stressful, but for some of our students, seeing things on an assessment that they don't know is very stressful. And it's okay that they struggle with it because they haven't been taught. That's why we're, we're so trying to get away from the skipping and allow a progression where kids can get where they want to get to without skipping content. So typically about 90 minutes, about 35 questions. As it gets up to seventh and eighth grade, it does get a little bit uh, obviously more challenging in terms of content, but it does get a little more rigorous um, in terms of, of, of ask because um, that fluency needs to be there at an even higher level. Uh, and looking at some of the chat questions, because we are kind of up with, um, with our slides. So there, there isn't an official second batch of testing. We just reach out to families individually. So if a student really knocks it out of the park, um, on, on one of the assessments, we'll reach out to the family. We don't, it's, it's very rarely more than a couple kids that we're going to ask to take that next assessment. So that would be individual. Um, I haven't seen the next one. Kind of along those lines, Aaron, um, in this slide here, we do have times when a, a teacher might reach out to a, a fifth grade teacher. And I see Carly on, uh, tonight. Um, and you know, she might be able to speak to this if she's there too, but you know, we have instances where a teacher will reach out to a parent and say, you know, I'm not sure if you're considering this or not, but um, I think, you know, nominating your child for the proficiency exam might be worth your while. And so, um, you know, there are times when we'll reach out as well or, um, and, you know, and I've heard of teachers or we know that we have some teachers who, uh, with parent permission, will go ahead and make that nomination on their behalf. So, I see Carly, I think she's tied up, but thanks for jumping in. She's done that in the past. So um, that's another way that students are nominated um, because not all parents might be aware of it. And so we try to also make sure that we are uh, advocating as well when we know that we've got a student who might be ready. Yeah, and 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 Fred, I don't know if you, if, if this is the one you were answering, but the, there are high cap kids that come into IMS that either want to take math one because they're in high cap because they have a passion for language arts and social studies, but math isn't something they have a passion about. So most definitely a high cap kid could be in math one, math two, or math three, or algebra. So it's really based on student need. 
Um, one thing that's an interesting thought, Lisa, and we can dig into this a little bit. There's a question about, are there practice exams available? Did any of those links that you saw or that you included have practice exams, like common core practice exams? No, they did not. Um, but, okay. and we were pretty, uh, we wanted to make sure that we weren't providing different yeah. information across the, the grade level. So unsure if we wanted to provide that for all the families and post it in one space. Yeah, so maybe that's something we can look into and see if there's there's some good ones out there. Uh, we just we don't have them as of right now. Um, really, it's looking at those standards, um, looking at Khan Academy. You mentioned other there's other resources out there. Um, does Lauren, when you guys redid the proficiency exam, were they multiple choice or is it word problems? How did you guys do that? So um, one, there are two parts to the test. One of the question, one parts of the test is multiple choice, and the other parts. Um, our free response. Some of the free response are computational problems and some of them are word problems. And that aligns with the seventh and eighth grades assessment as well. So there's both. Yeah. And one of the things, I, and Lisa said this at the beginning is we're not only assessing content knowledge, but the ability to communicate content. So the ability to show work. So the ability to communicate sometimes in, in words uh, because we know that math is so much more than just the algorithm and can I add, subtract, multiply, divide. So there are some questions that lend themselves more to what is the answer to this question, but there's also questions that we want to see the mathematical process being thought, not that there's a right or wrong, but also, but, but more that we can see the thinking of a student. So that those are ones that are much more um, um, free response answers. And then who grades them? Uh, they are graded here by our teachers um, who have developed them. So it's all done in-house. We don't send it out to anybody. It's, it's district created and district graded. I put in the chat as well, there's um, CK12 is also a great standards-based resource for families who are looking for some proficiency practice in those sixth and seventh grade standards. Yeah. And I think my closing thought would be um, going really back to those those kind of guiding principles about um, kids being appropriately placed, not skipping math. We want them to, to go through their experience at IMS, enjoying math, enjoying the process. I think what we found in the past is when kids didn't get into an accelerated track in sixth grade, it was really challenging for them. They felt like, oh, I can't get to algebra. There was sometimes push pushes uh, by families. How do we get there that where their students might not have been ready for it? We really feel like this is providing a path for kids, for every student that's ready to get to algebra. And because we've heard that's a value of the community, we understand it. We feel like our kids can do it and feel successful and feel strong about math. And so we're really excited and happy about these changes. And we think it's going to better meet the needs of our kids as they go, as they come from five to sixth grade, but also sixth through ninth grade and up into high school. So we're really happy about this and um, we're excited to share it with you. Now, next year at this time, we'll probably have a very similar um, a very similar meeting for our incoming sixth grade families that might look a little bit different, but we're going to just adjust based on what we see of our kids, because our goal at IMS is to meet our kids uh, where they are and provide them pathways to get them where they want to be. So uh, thank you for joining us tonight. We're really excited to be here. This is obviously recorded so we can send it out to people and more information will be coming out um, as we get it and as we uh, feel like we need to share in terms of dates, timelines, locations, things like that. So anybody else, Fred, I don't know if you want to send us home um, I, I want to thank all of you as staff members uh, for your continued work. Um, you know, we've had, we have a high school uh, administrator on tonight. We have uh, elementary administrator, elementary teacher, coaches, uh, middle school teachers, uh, uh, middle school admin. And, and what I hope the community is seeing is that we're really trying to work uh, K-12 right now on our math progressions. 
We started before the pandemic. Uh, we had hoped to be a little further along, um, but we're uh, sidetracked a bit. Uh, however, we did uh, adopt that uh, math curriculum that you saw tonight. Our elementary is in the process right now of selecting a new math uh, instructional material core uh, curriculum that will begin uh, rolling out in third, fourth, and fifth grade next year. And then as we read, or as we alluded to earlier, um, the high school team is, is thinking about instructional materials and also some of the courses that we're offering. Um, so we know that it is uh, an area that uh, we wanna continue to work on. We know our community is invested uh, in uh, wanting to continue to see us uh, open up options for our students. Uh, and that's what we're working on. And so more will be coming about how we're going to continue to meet the needs of students, both in elementary school uh, and uh, what those will look like, and then also in high school. But hopefully tonight gives you a great glimpse into uh, how the district is really trying to work uh, to provide multiple pathways for students and that acceleration doesn't have to happen in one, one point in a student's career. Um, it can happen along the way. So Thanks you everyone for uh, being here tonight and uh, have a good one.